Caddis Maximus here. I was originally going to review these, but decided just to make kind of a two-in-one video where I talk about the difference between a digital and an analog sound level meter. Now, I am missing my little phones on these, but that's not uh, the worst thing in the world here. But sound level meters are used often in many types of YouTube videos, from car review videos, reviewing uh, internal noise levels, to drone videos, reviewing how loud drones are. A vast majority of these little digital things, uh, which have a little just a uh, numeric display, just like what this might have here. And they generally work okay, but one of the issues is the essentially slow response, even when the digital ones are on a response rate. And I've looked at actually, we have a couple professional audio stores in the area. And a while back, I went and looked at a lot of the digital ones, even some pretty expensive ones, and it still was generally the same issue where the numbers don't update particularly fast, even though you do have some nice options like being able to uh, see what the maximum level volume is. Now, what I've also been noticing is like on much cheaper ones, they won't have this bar. Now, the point of this bar, and it's also on a digital multimeters, is to kind of provide the same effect that you get with an analog meter. And that effect would be, in this case, how it its response rate and how well it does respond pretty well. Um, one thing that we can notice immediately with the analog gauge is that we just have is that response time, the reduced latency, and the fact that it's much easier to see very sudden transit peaks. Or on something like this, we'll show some pretty good peaks. On this here, we can see that even if we go up to the next level, whenever I make a particular sound, like maybe uh, an S sound or something like that, we can see that I'm getting some pretty large transient peaks. And some of those, we can see this jumping up to zero. The way an analog meter works is say we have it on the 80 dB level. So right here at zero would be exactly 80 dB and to the left would be uh, 78, 76, uh, or 74 dB. And then on the opposite side would be plus. And so that's how you read these and it always starts off at low. But the point is, is that there are some pretty loud transient peaks. And when these are particularly on fast, you can see those uh, real obviously. And that's one of the nice things about it. Actually, if I go down the next sensitivity rating, if we go to the slow, which just reduces the res responsiveness a little bit, we can see that now the analog one is acting more like the digital one as far as the response time. Actually, let me do another example of that here. I'll go outside. Okay, I have my overtime, <laughs> summertime overhead cooling fan here. And uh, just one couple things. My voice is louder than this Mavic Mini when I'm standing 18 inches away from it with these meters. And the meters are pointing towards the drone and away from me. It's a quiet drone. You can see why analog meters can be so handy because the digital meter doesn't, even though it has a bar there, which does help a lot for you to identify short transient peaks, a lot of times the transient peaks are what cause the hearing damage. So it won't overall or average be that loud. But as you can see the way the needle is just super peaking on the Craftsman, it's a big deal. There we go. I just switched to Craftsman to have a slow response rate on the needle. And it's about the same as the bar is on the Radio Shack. But that's really why I like these analog ones just because it, the needle just makes it so easy and obvious. All right, so the point of that was just kind of be more realistic, real-world test of measuring sound levels and kind of giving an impression of what something that seems loud may not actually be as loud as something else. And hearing damage doesn't occur depending on how loud you think it is. It's just simply too much air pressure hammering into your ear. There are three little bones that are connected to a little speaker diaphragm, a piece of skin, and when you get too much force on those, regardless of the frequency, uh, it causes hearing damage as well as the little hairs that actually pick up the vibrations. And so that's why I still like analog multimeters, or analog, uh, excuse me, uh, sound level meters just because they give you a better idea of this absolute variation. However, there are other situations such as music or you're doing more consistent sound level testing, say drones, and you know that you're not gonna be 
having lots of transient sound peaks, say if you're trying to measure how loud it is to run a, uh, an impact driver or something like that, then the digital ones are better just because they're a little bit easier with more you know, minimum and maximum. Even though this does have a data hold function, it just prevents the needle from, uh, from moving. Uh, on this, you know, you have min max data holds and that type of thing. Now, on both of these, they do have what are outputs, and the whole point of the outputs on better quality uh, SPL meters is just so they can be hooked up to other audio equipment, so that you can just use this as a remote kind of sound level meter. Say if you're just in a band, and you're setting up some speakers, and what you could do is you could with like a small mixing board, you know, you have a reasonable signs you know maybe for a bar or a club or something like that you would set this up like in the middle of the room and you would run a cable from it to your mixing board and then that way you could adjust all your levels and you're getting uh, basically what is a you could use any microphone but these are essentially calibrated for sound SPL levels and so that's why you might want to use it and no my name's not Brooks I did uh, pick this up at a garage sale a long time ago back when Radio Shack used to be around and actually sell items that were relatively worthy, kind of like Sears here. Now, I do not have the little phones or the little furry things. What all those are is to uh, wind blocking. Uh, many times I understand that if you're in an indoor situation where you have where air move, sound from air movement isn't a concern, then you have less of a justification for using uh, those phones. They can, you know, help, but they're also something that's in front of the microphone so you kind of have to know the details of exactly what you're trying to measure uh, to really decide whether you want one of the i think they call them uh dead cats i don't like calling them that because i like cats when they're alive but some like this uh, radio shack are looking around online and i'm not sure that this one ever actually came with a phone so they just made their grill des recess grill design may uh, have something to do with that so anyway, uh, versus so many of those tiny little um, SPL meters, there are reasons to have larger uh, digital ones because you get that bar, which kind of gives you an idea about transient peaks. And then if you're much more serious about it and you're measuring sound levels that may vary wildly, you know, such as hitting something with a hammer, it'll be quiet and then it'll be an extremely loud sound, then uh, analog sound level meters really can be quite handy in those situations. So even though everything's digital these days there are situations where the the way a needle can convey information very quickly in an obvious fashion without even knowing how to read numbers to tell you the truth um, can be handy also I should mention something else about the A and C weighting so there humans hear sounds dynamically kinda like how we see colors dynamically what that actually means is when we see colors you need much less uh if you have three red green and blue lights in front of you the green light will be using the least amount of power and still will seem just as bright as the blue excuse me or the red just because your eyes are most sensitive in the green range sound is the same way right around two to four thousand hertz two to five thousand hertz you know the the average types of sounds and then uh vocalization in many animals including us right in that frequency range so we're most sensitive in that so the C range is rating kind of like how humans hear sound where a range would be more of an absolute physical pressure level and so that's uh, the difference between a and C ratings and why everything is in a C rating on uh, SPL meters is because that's how humans tend to hear the level of sounds uh, but it is important to have a weighting because then you can really know, just regardless of the frequency, uh, what the absolute pressure levels are. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.